What's up everybody, Jack here, and today I'm going to be analyzing some data from Google Trends to help you guys better predict your own behavior in the world of getting your own work, becoming self-employed, working from home, earning money online, whatever you want to call it. In the world of you having more control over your financial circumstance and not relying on other people. This is the kind of work I'm talking about. Whether this is working remotely, you're still always relying on people in some way, but you can set yourself up so that you're offering your services to a wide variety of different clients, and you have a wide variety of different income streams. So even when something completely disappears or vanishes, you're okay, you're in a better situation. And ultimately, if you want true flexibility in your life, and you want to be able to provide, sorry, if you want true stability in your life, and you want to be able to provide this stability for your family, your loved ones, and your friends as well, then you need to have multiple income streams. You cannot have a regular job if you want to be realistic. The United States is about, is entering, has already entered, the biggest unemployment event in its history. And this is just the beginning of this. And the, the crazy thing about this is that we're never going to get all these jobs back. Because the reality is that behind the scenes, companies have been waiting for artificial intelligence and machines and other things to take over jobs that people have been occupying. And now is a perfect opportunity for these companies to push this forward. It is now a health hazard to employ humans for most businesses. And they are strongly incentivized to utilize artificial intelligence, remote work, and machines. Computers in general. I'm not so much talking about mechanical machines. But we are at a revolutionary point in history. It is very fascinating to see what's going on, okay? So first, I want to show you an analysis of the amount of interest and people searching for work from home, okay? This is over a 14-year period of time. So first, let me explain how this graph works exactly. You can see that the highest point on the graph is 100, and basically the lowest, this bar here, is 0, and most of the activity exists between 25 and 50. What are these metrics? These are percentages, okay? So if it's at 100%, that means that it is the most in recorded history. If it's at 0%, that means it's the least in recorded history relative to how things have been going. So you could have an industry reach 100% in this metric, right? And then go lower. And then have a new 100. And the second there's a new 100, the previous 100 is no longer 100 because it's relative to the whole history. Okay? So there's no zeros here because there was never a point where nobody at all relative to the total history was searching for working from home. However, there are some trends. You can see that between January 2014 and January of 2000, or sorry, January of 2004 and January of 2016, there was very little fluctuation. You can see that at the lowest point, okay, there were, that number is around 18, and here we have 34. So it almost doubled, right? But aside from that, it was pretty stable. Then, in 2016, that all changed. Something happened. I don't know what. All I can say is that looking at this data, events happened that changed people's perceptions, and this led to more people searching for the term work from home. And at this point, it was more than ever recorded. So in the first quarter, first half really, of 2016, more people were interested in working from home than ever before. So on this day, even though it's 47 now, it would have actually been 100 at the point where it happened, just like this. This is 100, because we are currently in the most interest in recorded history, 
in Google Analytics or Google Trends of this search term. Remember, it's a percentile, right? But you, I want you to understand this because basically this was relatively stable and then there was an event and the way that these events work typically is the event happens, you have a huge influx, then you have a deflux or a decrease, and then you have a new norm that is higher than the previous norm, okay? And you can see that that absolutely happened here. This norm is in a whole new range compared to this norm. This norm hugged the 25 percentile for almost an eight-year period of time. And then, at this point, there was a big influx. And then from here, things changed, right? And then we just experienced another one of those influxes. So now there's more people searching for working from home than ever before, okay? Now, let's look at another really interesting chart. This, I love to see when I see a chart like this because it shows a seasonality, a strong seasonality. And what's ear, the data here is very inconsistent, so we're just kind of going to ignore that. I'm not sure how, what, if anything changed, or maybe Google changed the way they were recording this, but you can see that here is a very predictable pattern. It's actually quite similar to Amazon's fourth quarter pattern. If we look at Amazon.com as an e-commerce company, you can see that every fourth quarter they have a very predictable and maintained spike, and they've been able to increase that and maintain it throughout recorded history on Google Trends. Okay? Same thing here. In self-employment, people start being interested in it January in first quarter, and then by May, right here, May, they're done with it. And then they lose interest until January of first quarter of the next year, and then they lose interest uh, in May. And we have, oh, a bit of an increase in December, but really starting a big increase in January. And guess what? They lose it in May of the next year. Very, very predictably, people spike their searches for self-employment between January and May. Every single year. Now this history is going to change because the COVID pandemic changed this. So this graph is going to be, you're going to be able to observe the effect of COVID on us or on this self-employment history in more detail once another year or so passes because you're going to see that these shapes aren't going to look exactly like that. And basically what's going to happen is that we had that first quarter rush of interest in self-employment no matter what, but now that's going to be continued before it tapers off. So basically, it might be more well-rounded. We might see it taper off in August or September, or maybe this will be one of these same patterns where a huge uptick happens, and then there's a decrease, and a new norm is established that is higher than the previous norm. It is completely possible that is about to happen with the interest in self-employment, but we won't really know until we have another year of data to look at, okay? And I wanted to make this video real quick just to illustrate how we can look at things and explore Google Trends, and then we can find events. You can often look at these changes, and these graphs represent people's perceptions events happened things happen and it causes changes in these graphs and it's really fascinating to study this kind of stuff all right guys thanks for watching i'll see you next time ciao